You even see disturbing and disgusting videos like this. This is a cop admitting Check out the links in the description for my favorite apparel, Bibles, books, commentaries, and more. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. In this video, you're finally going to see where Kamila definitively stands on everything from taxes to life in the womb, the Second Amendment, healthcare, the border, and more. And also, I'm going to show you the number one thing that Kamila vowed to fight for that directly targets Christians. Hey, real quick, would you hit that thumbs up button? You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. Kamila finally releases some of her policies after being installed as the Democratic nominee like two months ago. You know, ever since the coup, Kamala as literally the only thing that she's been able to run on, the only thing she's been able to talk about is taking life in the womb and protecting LGB people, which are clearly the most pressing matters in our society today since, you know, you can afford to buy groceries and gas and pay rent and, you know, provide for your children. But who cares about all that? Because we have a new way forward. That is literally what Kamala is calling her new policies, a new way forward, as if she hasn't been vice president for the last four years. And also remember this, Kamila says that she is literally the last person in the room whenever there are big decisions being made over the last four years. So yes, she is absolutely instrumental in everything that you're seeing in our country right now, but it's a new way forward. So, <laughs> so here's all her policies. Um, I expanded all the ones we're going to go over. We're not going to, I'm not going to read everything on this page. So you can go check out the page and read everything uh, for yourself, which I highly encourage you to do. But in this video, I want to go over the things that are going to absolutely destroy America. If this woman becomes the president of the United States. So she says, we're going to build an opportunity economy and lower costs for families. They haven't done that in the last four years. In fact, they've done quite the opposite. So I want you to check out how bizarre her policies start here. So she's going to cut taxes for the middle class families and make rent more affordable and home ownership more attainable, all at the same time. I want you to notice it says, unlike Trump, Vice President Kamala and Governor Awal are committed to ensuring no one earning less than 400000 a year will pay more in taxes. They won't pay less, but they won't pay more. So they have no intention of trying to lower your taxes. They're just telling you that you won't pay more, which is a lie, by the way. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. They believe we need to chart a new way forward as opposed to the last four years, which was the old new way. <laughs> One way they're going to ensure that you don't pay more in taxes is causing you to pay more in taxes. In one way, she's going to make sure you don't pay more in taxes by paying more in taxes is to give everybody $25,000 to help with a down payment uh, for buying a home for first time homeowners. You're just going to get $25,000 that comes out of nowhere. <laughs> this will absolutely destroy the middle class, but she boasts that it offers more Americans a path to the middle class and economic opportunity, which is an outright lie. This is the kind of thing that destroys economies. You can't just hand out free money. You can't just pass out $25,000 to everybody buying their first home and it not affect anybody. The money doesn't just come out of nowhere. But the way that this works is you give $25,000 to buy a home. Homes suddenly become $25,000, $50,000 more expensive. And everybody that's struggling to pay their rent and to pay their mortgage for their house that they already bought back when they could afford to own a home, you know, before Sleepy Joe and Kamala Harry, all those people who can barely afford to survive and keep their homes are now paying more to be able to fund 
everybody else getting $25,000 towards a home. And even though they couldn't afford to buy that home without free money being given to them, when I say free, I mean you're paying for it. Then after they slap that $25,000 down towards a house, they're just going to magically be able to pay the mortgage after that too. Oh wait, no, you're, you're, you're going to pay for that as well. Another one of her policies is to take on bad actors and bring down costs. How's she going to do this? She says, as attorney general of California, Kamila took on the big banks to deliver for homeowners. I mean, just lies. She's just lying, but people aren't going to fact check anything. So it doesn't matter. She can get away with it. She says as president, she will direct her administration to crack down on anti-competitive practices that let big corporations jack up prices and undermine the competition that allows all businesses to thrive. She's going to do this by introducing communistic price gouging laws. You know, the kind that have never worked for any society ever. But listen to CNN rip Kamila on this. If it's not going to be supply and demand that's uh, determining how much your grocery store charges you for, for milk or for eggs. It's going to be some bureaucrat in D.C., which seems like totally unworkable, first of all. We've seen this kind of thing tried in lots of other countries before. Venezuela, Argentina, the Soviet Union, et cetera. It leads to shortages. It leads to black markets, um, you know, plenty of uncertainty. And beyond that, the specific way this bill is written might actually increase prices. Really hard for me to imagine any form of legislation that uh, preserves the spirit of what she's proposing that would not be, uh, you know, at best do nothing, at worst cause a lot of harm. Now it also says that Harris will make affordable health care a right and not a privilege, which is not constitutional whatsoever, but I, I know it sounds good. You, you want it to be the right thing because it hits you in the feel goods. But we've seen what happens when they do this kind of thing. You saw it with Obama and Obamacare. You saw it with the Affordable Care Act, which she's boasting about. They aren't actually doing what they say that they want to do. All they're doing is harming people by by, by pretending that they can just throw healthcare out there as a free-for-all net to cover everybody and anybody for anything and everything. And never forget that she cast the tie-breaking vote to pass the Inflation Reduction Act, which was a scam and had nothing to do with lowering inflation. Never, ever forget this, that it was Kamila that passed the tie-breaking vote that made everything more expensive and made your life harder to live. The Inflation Reduction Act was named the Inflation Reduction Act because if they named it what it actually was, you wouldn't have liked it so much. And that's because all this was was a climate bill in disguise. In fact, watch Sleepy Joe himself admit that this bill was a disguise just the other day. My, uh, my investments, that through my investments, the most significant climate change law ever, and by the way, it is a $369 billion bill, it's called the, uh, we, we should have named it what it was, but uh, but at any rate. And again, I can't stress this enough, it was Kamila that passed the tie-breaking vote for the Inflation Reduction Act that was actually literally a bill to increase inflation. But don't worry, this was a lie and she was the tie-breaking vote for it and everything, but everything else on her policies isn't a lie. She's not lying about anything else. It was, it was just the inflation thingy. Again, now we get to the section where it says we're going to safeguard our fundamental freedoms. When they say things like this, they're literally meaning our, as in like them. Not you, their fundamental freedoms to do whatever they want over you. Not, not the American people, our, but them, our. Or not the child in the womb, our. Because check this out. Again, radical, progressive ideologies here where 
they want to make it law to where you can take a, a, a child in the womb, you, you can take their life with no limits whatsoever. In fact, you saw Timmy Awall do this in Minnesota, where he actually vetoed uh, a, a bill that would have made it illegal to take the, the life of a child that had already been born. Can you believe that? It's disgusting. And of course, they want to protect civil rights and freedoms. This is just disguise talk for her literally saying right here as president, she'll pass the Equality Act. I did a video on this. The Equality Act is literally just an anti-religious freedom law. All it has to do is taking the rights away from Christians in America. That's what it's all about. This isn't just about accepting LGB down here. You can see that this is an anti-discrimination protection for LGB. Oh, gee, who'd ever thought that was coming? It's not just accepting it. If you don't celebrate LGB and promote LGB and uplift LGB above all, if you don't worship LGB, then you are a bigot. So you can't help but see how wonderful the irony is here when she has a section about safeguarding our fundamental freedoms. And then you go to the very next section and she talks about wanting to literally ban your firearms, take away your second amendment, uh, which isn't a fundamental freedom apparently. The next section is ensuring safety and justice for all. So uh, under this section, she says she wants to make our community safer from gun violence and crime, even though crime has spiked due to having like 20 to 30 million illegal immigrants in our country that have been wreaking havoc on people, absolutely destroying our economy, what, what little is left of it, and also the, the crime rate violent crime rate is through the roof. And on top of that, they want to let in violent illegal criminals and then take your guns away so that you can't protect yourself. What's funny is that she boasts, <laughs> you can't make this up. She boasts about <laughs> investing $15 billion in supporting local law enforcement and community safety programs across 1,000 cities, towns, and counties. You know, for far too long, the status quo thinking has been to believe that by putting more police on the street, you're going to have more safety. And that's just wrong. Does that mean you support proposals like what we've seen in Los Angeles, Mayor Eric Garcetti saying, take some of the money from policing, about $150 million. I applaud Eric Garcetti for doing what he's done. It is outdated, it is wrong-headed thinking to think that the only way you're going to get communities to be safe is to put more police officers on the street. We have to reimagine public safety and how we do public safety in our country. One local radio show asked then-Senator Kamala Harris where she stood on the defund the police movement. Defund the police. The, the, the issue behind it is that we need to reimagine how we are creating safety. So I don't know how you defund the police and also invest $15 billion in supporting local law enforcement. She will ban assault weapons in high-capacity magazines, require universal background checks, and support red flag laws that keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. You know, she they, they love to talk about how you know, the, this whole thing with uh, universal background checks and all that, background checks are a thing. Everybody has to do one in order to purchase a, web, a firearm. This is all smoke and mirrors. But what you don't want to miss here is that she is telling you that she is going to ban assault weapons. And what she means is that she will use her power as president to implement things like buyback programs to take away your ARs. And if you don't submit, you will pay a price, a penalty, most likely up to and including your life in one way or another. In fact, listen to Kamala say it herself. I'm prepared to take executive action and put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. But we still have to deal with 
the over 2 million assault weapons that are currently in the streets of America. And so a buyback program I, is a good idea. And if Congress fails to act, I'll give them 100 days to put a pill, bill on my desk for signature. And if they do not do it, I will put in place by executive action a comprehensive background check requirement and a ban on the assault weapons and importation of assault weapons into our country. I'm done. And that's why we will work to pass universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban. And then listen to how she boasts about how Australia did the right thing and we should be more like Australia. Gun violence is terrorized and traumatized so many of our communities in this country. And let us be clear. It does not have to be this way, as our friends in Australia have demonstrated. In fact, I love what Colin Rugg said. He said, anyone who thinks the government wants to take your guns because they care about your safety is incredibly misguided. And that's putting it lightly. Elon Musk don't care what you think about him. This is still the truth. The right to bear arms is there to protect free speech and stop a tyrannical government from taking your rights away. That's why the first thing that all tyrants do is disarm the people. Kamala will be the most radical anti-Second Amendment president to ever president. So again, a part of them safeguarding our fundamental freedoms is taking away your fundamental freedoms. Kind of funny how that works. She also says that a part of her ensuring safety and justice for all that they will secure our borders and fix our broken immigration system. An absolute lie. You've seen what's happened under Kamala's reign as the borders are for the last four years. You've seen 20 to 30 million illegal immigrants in our country wreaking havoc and literally doing whatever they want without having any type of laws uh, uh, applied to them. They get free money free housing, free food, food stamps. They, they, they literally get anything and everything they want handed to them and yet are not accountable to our laws. You see them being released left and right from custody. Uh, if they get arrested for some sort of violent crime, they get released. You even see disturbing and disgusting videos like this. This is a cop admitting the truth. He went to okay, well, it was back in the first off, we're a sanctuary city. Even if he is legal here, we cannot call ICE. Okay, for them. but you still have to report wow. that, right? No, we don't. Wow. It's a sanctuary city. We do not report illegal conduct. So you're going to let a person who went to prison, he committed a crime in America, who's illegal right now, you're going to let him go free right now. Exactly. So he's a That's exactly what I'm saying, because we're a sanctuary city. I've arrested a double homicide suspect in this city before and let him walk out the door because we're a sanctuary city. He literally just said that they've arrested homicide suspects and let them walk free because they're a sanctuary city. And this man is asking this police officer to do something about the violent occurrence that just happened by this illegal. And the cop is saying, no, we're not going to do anything. We, we can't do anything. We're a sanctuary city. You know, the left, Kamila, they want to make New York like this. California, all these sanctuary cities, they want to make it a sanctuary country to where if you are an illegal, you are not held accountable to the laws of the land. In fact, you have free reign to do whatever you want. A violent crime? Go ahead. While citizens of the United States of America pay the price for it themselves. And like I've shown you in other videos, if you get caught praying and singing hymns outside of an abhorrent clinic, then you'll face up to a decade in prison. But if you're illegal, you can commit violent crimes and be let go. In fact, Kamila boasts about as vice president, she supported the bipartisan border security bill. That bill would have allowed 1.4 million illegal immigrants to cross the border and be released into the U.S. every single day year and would have allowed 4,000 illegal immigrants to breach the border every single day. In fact, the New York Post had this uh, front page post here, crime and again, three out of four arrested in Midtown, a migrant. Three out of every four arrests have been a migrant. And then she goes on to support Gaza, um, say some nonsense about pretending to invest in America's resources, 
absolute lie. They haven't done it for four years. They're not going to do it now. And then gaslight veterans and their families. And again, this is all uh, put up against Trump's Project 2025 agenda, they like to say. They're still pushing this, this uh, that, that the Project 2025 is Trump's agenda. Like he personally came up with it himself, even though he said he didn't. He didn't know anything about it and it has nothing to do with him. But again, all they can do is stand on lies that are heaped on lies and that are heaped on lies. You've seen what Kamila is capable of. Uh, she's been vice president for the last four years. You've seen what Timmy Awal is capable of. He's led, <laughs> for lack of a better term, Minnesota. Uh, and you've seen what he's done in that state. These two are the two most radical politicians in our government, yet they are wanting to lead and co-lead the United States of America. And they are admitting to their radical agenda, but wrapping it up with nice words. And they're not even nice words. It doesn't. It's not that hard to read through what their agenda is. But if they can just make it sound a little less radical than what it is, people will fall for it. You know, ultimately God is in control. I want you to remember this promise. This is Proverbs chapter 3. Starting in verse 5 here, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you regularly. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.